So let's touch on that for a, a briefly then. You yeah. as head designer, or mm -hmm. head of design of Head Shaw, of design, yeah. Part of your, what you see your responsibilities, head of design of a large theater company, is to present yeah, to choose the designers. At that time, I was choosing the designers to meet up with the directors. Now, we had in-house directors at that time. Uh, we had the Derek Goldbys, the Christopher Newtons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And other directors were brought in, of course, to, to augment this. But the way, the way the, the, these regional theaters are structured <coughs> excuse me, was that I had to have a design in and there was no time for a long kind of courtship between a designer and director. So I would choose designers who I knew would get the design in on time, first of all, who had a very special talent, would deliver a certain product that was totally unlike mine. Right. I had designers who were costume, strong in costume. I had designers who were strong in architecture or in sets. And th but they all had to do both disciplines. Very rarely would I hire a costume designer and a set designer to work on a show. It was one designer. And did you consciously try to create your design community, as it were, yeah. to present a full menu of tastes? I mean, not to some too degree. much of yeah. abstract and yeah. not too much of this? Just to some degree, yes. And that's in consideration with your artistic With feeling, the artistic or, director. Or who you think the audience is? Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's not so much what what the audience is dictating, it's the artistic director on what his season is dictating. His or her seasons, those seasons are like a symphony. They're, they're structured to go from A to B in a certain way. There are themes in a season. And I would do the same thing to augment that with the designers, to have certain designers in. And the artistic directors at Shaw when you were there were? Well, was Christopher Newton. And were you there with, with uh, Paxton? No, I was with Paxton in Vancouver. Right. Not That's here. I, I came out here with Christopher, you know, right. as I said, you know, the, the Vancouver Mafia that <laughs> came out, or, or the six pack, six shooters, or whatever. They had all kinds of, there were six of us that came. Oh, really? Who were the six? Well, there was Christopher, of course. It was Paul Reynolds, right. Jeffrey Dallas, um, Elaine um, in box office, Camilla Ross, five in marketing, and myself, six. Yeah. And what year was that? 7980. My first season designing there was 1980, but I, I, I came out in 79 with Paul and Christopher to look at the theater and uh, I knew we were coming in right away and meet up with the gang who was there, and meet up with the, new, the staff we were going to inherit so and the ones who walked right off the stage wouldn't meet us and disappeared never to be seen again. Because <laughs> they knew they would be exited or? Yeah, probably. Because he brought his own general manager, I mean, you know, so. So was that, that was resentful to this? Uh, to some degree, any change like that is resentful. Yeah. You know, it always, it's, that's a fact of life. You know, it's not going to be, you know, easy. I, um, I didn't lose, I, I didn't lose very many technical people whatsoever. Um, uh, the first year, at the end of the first year, I, the head of wardrobe left. And, and I was relatively pleased to some degree about that because it, it was, we weren't meshing properly. Um, those heads, those people who are the heads of departments, you know, they've, they've got to mesh with the head of design because I'm making decisions with designers on what, what they can do and what they can't do in some of these departments just so we don't overload. I mean, nobody has the right to go into a theater company and just grind it to a halt with some explosive design. Right. Right. And that's one of the jobs I had to do was to just make sure that everything, you know, was on budget, on time, etc. Looking at all the theater spaces in Canada, what's your favorite space to design in? Oh, I'm somehow in the back of my head, I knew you were going to say that. And what's your worst? I've never had a worse space. I've had, I've had some challenging spaces, right. really challenging spaces, and by coming up with a production in that space that I was pleased with in that, that space suddenly became one of my favorite spaces. I wouldn't want to maybe do certain plays in it, but, but it would work. Um, my favorite space. I would have said the Vancouver Playhouse, but after leaving Vancouver and working in so many other regional theaters, etc., I realized that Vancouver Playhouse has, 
has a problem in its proportion, it's in, its, in its proscenium proportion. It's like designing in a letterbox. Right. Uh, Manitoba Theater Center is off center. <laughs> you probably know that. The center okay. line, the audience is over by about, yeah. what, three feet? Yeah. Off center. So they're always sitting kind of like that. That was a problem. Um, didn't discover that until it was almost too late. Um, the theater right now that I'm the most in love with at this moment, besides the Shaw Festival, um, there, there are two theaters, and they're directly opposite each other. One is Theater Aquarius in Hamilton. Fabulous theater to design for. You wow. don't have a fire curtain, and it's a proscenium house. You know, Peter Smith designed a fire curtain that tracks in a curve around the perimeter of the orchestra pit. Hello, why didn't anybody ever think of this? Right. So therefore, you don't have this problem where you've got fire curtains at, like at, down here down the street, which is 15 feet upstage of the Presidium opening, you know. It's just ridiculous. Theater Aquarius is a fabulous space designed for, and it's an intimate house at the same time to performing. It's a little wide, but that's my job. Make it work. Right. And the other one is the direct opposite, is the courthouse at Shaw. I love that space. Three-quarter round, same across stage. To talk a little bit about spaces, uh, I toured with Tuffle Music over a couple of years, and I noticed whenever we went into a different space, a church here or a cathedral or London or Los Angeles or whatever, that they rehearsed in the space briefly for five or ten minutes and then they understood the space in terms of sound. How mm -hmm. the space mm -hmm. was kind to these tones, was unkind to those tones, what it did for the warmth, for the clarity, for the sharpness. And so the space in sound wise has different characters for different pieces of music and they would have to adjust. And I'm wondering if the spaces are the same theatrically in, in a similar way, if the bones of a space do not present different characteristics that you have to work with. Absolutely. There's no difference. You go, when I go onto a stage, I always have to see the stage I'm designing for. It's very, it's very difficult to design for a theater space that you, you've never seen or never been on the stage. And the first thing I do when I, I go on the stage is if I'm an actor, and I try and find the center point, the center of the stage, which you are in control of the whole audience. And I try to look at that. Where is it relative to the proscenium opening, or where is it relative to any other piece of architecture whatsoever? The Shaw Festival, you've got a balcony that's up there, you know, so the focal point changes considerably there. That if you want to design for, for that space, in other words, the sight lines, you know, right. of that space, your, your set can't be more than 20 feet deep or 15 feet deep because it, it can't be seen when you go up to it. So this is choices you have to make is how do I design for that space now that, that's going to serve the actors and the play? And I've got to find that, that center point. I've got to find that one point on the stage where you're in control of the whole space. And once I find that, and I have to sometimes have to make some terrible decisions, like I've got to sacrifice this group. National Arts Center, for example. Take a proscenium show into the National Arts Center, which was basically designed for the Stratford winter, as a winter home for the Stratford Festival, with the thrust stage and what have you. Um, you have to shut down the space, so you bring in the tormentors and shut the space down so that it fits into the framework of the show that you're touring with, which came out of a proscenium theater. And what you've just done is you've eliminated, you know, 20% of the audience, and they don't sell the tickets for those places. Right. There's a lot of theater companies don't like that, you know, that you go in and you have to, I have to sacrifice seats. And, you know, you'll have a, you'll have a general manager on your case very quickly <laughs> saying, no, we can't sacrifice. You have to do something else about it. But those, those are problems. Um, Shaw Festival, for years, we sacrificed the boxes, you know, the so-called two boxes that they have there. We had to sacrifice them. You, the people sitting in those boxes could not see 300, you can't, could not see the total stage. Right, right. Just couldn't, and, a lot, and that's, a, that's a case that happens with a lot of the, the boxes. Right. Yeah. You say you never designed for the festival stage at Stratford. No, 
what would you, Avon. Yeah. What would you do if someone gave you a show on the festival stage? Well, I would, I would do it to the best of my ability. <laughs> <laughs> I, of I mean, well, I mean, I've been on, I've walked on the festival stage. Uh, you know, I know the stage, I know the theater, et cetera, et cetera. That really depends on 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 the director. Many, is it a unique ways. animal that stage? It is fairly unique. It's a it's a it's a real challenge for a director to do, to direct a show on the festival stage. Well, one of the things Robert I wouldn't do is I wouldn't design a lot of scenery. That's the first thing. That that stage is is designed for small props or or props and costume. You don't design too much scenery. Yes, you can design the bits of scenery here and there, and some people have tackled that space and tore out the towers and got rid of the staircases, etc., and have built these elaborate sets on. Well, that, I wouldn't do that. That's not what me, because that theater is beautiful. I would want to use it. So what are those designers doing that they do that? They want to make a proscenium theater out of it, I think. And it isn't. It's just a big thrust theater. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I would be reluctant to start designing a lot of scenery for that space. Very reluctant. Here's a kind of subsidiary topic that I'm interested in because we all fall into it. There are camps in Canadian theatre, mm -hmm. right? There's camps. And the fact that you have never des designed for the festival stage, right? Mm -hmm. Designed for the Avon. But you've been a Shaw designer and not a Stratford yes. designer. Yes, okay. Right? I see where you're going. Where do, how do <laughs> these... Uh, is it frustrating? No, not at all. I don't give a hoot. It's um, I, not at all. Yes, I know that the camp was there. I know that when I was head of design at the Shaw Festival Theatre, was very, nobody was hiring me at, at Stratford. Nobody was hiring Christopher Newton to direct at Stratford as artistic director, and vice versa. But I did hire Stratford designers to come to Shaw and, and design. But as head of design, I, I, couldn't, I didn't feel that I could go to, to Stratford. Right. That was just my own feeling. First of all, I don't think I would even have the time to do it. But as once I retired the position of head of design at Shaw, I suddenly get a call to go to Stratford, <laughs> just like that. I went to the Avon, of course, but that was fine. Right. And then I did Gigi there two years in a row. And the rivalry, because there was a was is was Only a rivalry in the cricket the field, too. really. But in the cricket field. Though. In the cricket field, there wasn't a rivalry in my area. I, I think there were certain there were certain uh, um, what would you call it? Um, there were certain feelings about what each space was all about. I had them as well. I you know I felt that Stratford was just this amazing place in the universe. You know, and so when I worked there, I found it, it was no different than Shaw as far as I was concerned. They have some wonderful technicians and they have some good technicians. Shaw has the same thing, has good technicians and wonderful technicians, you know. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't suddenly getting, you know, into, into heaven when I went there.